This is a public hearing to review site plan for proposed uh, renovation of the East School at 219 Chestnut, I'm sorry, Christian Lane, um, to contain nine apartments. Um, the plans were submitted to us and the application. I believe we can share them, but maybe Mr. O'Bear would like to give us just a very quick overview. I'm going to assume that I think it's fair to assume that most of the people on the planning board have looked at the plans and read it. And my guess is the same for the for the abutters or the others here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So quickly, just to come before the board again, um, I think at our, our last time together was more of just kind of an introduction and a and a uh, get familiar with the project. So um, we submitted a formal site plan done by Saruta Engineering out of Leverett, um, basically just cleaning up the the uh, the version that we'd sent previously. Uh, show fully showing the expansion of the parking, the dumpsters, the dumpster enclosures, the location of the lighting, additional plantings, uh, buffer, proposed planting buffer on the rear of the site to uh, add some shading for the neighbors, um, as well as some plantings in the front. Uh, we have a total of uh, 23 parking spaces, of which one is ADA compliant. Um, we have a lighted parking lot with down lighting, uh, non, -ob non obtrusive. Um, I think that's kind of about it. I, I hopefully we've met all of the uh, what the planning board is looking for. We've got a second page in here uh, with the site plan, which shows basically some of the details and the plans as to the fencing around the dumpster, um, size and shape of all the parking, et cetera. Um, mostly sort of the, you know, administrative and, and uh, specifics on each item uh, in case there's clarification needed. Uh, we should have all the answers here on these pages. So I have the site plan here laid out next to my desk in case anyone has a specific comment or question about something. I can try to address it as directly as possible. Okay, I think we can share it on the screen. Yeah, probably would be a good idea. I'm prepared to do that. So give me. So I'll share page one. This is one of the advantages of Zoom, by the way. It's easier to see than it town hall sometimes. And let me know if people need me to zoom in on anything. So you can see we're we're keeping the existing curb cut. We're not changing anything about the access. Uh, in and out of the property still to remain on Christian Lane. The parking lot is basically staying where it is now. It's sort of like a basketball court now. We're going to remove the curbing, expand the parking lot uh, to the north of the property, and uh, and then repave the whole thing. And you're adding some stormwater management facilities. Is that correct? correct. Correct. Yeah. Uh, sort of best practices these days is this is the on site stormwater management. We're going to have a small, it's not really a retention pond. It's more of a depression with uh, stone and drainage. There's some, some, uh, some sections on the plan sort of showing exactly what those are. And it's basically to catch the water from the parking lot will go into there and it'll feed some native, some native plantings that are planted in that area. And it'll sort of draw from that. So, um, yeah, I think it's a pretty good design. Personally. Is the flow of water from this parking lot to the to the retention area done entirely using grading, or are there yeah, drains? Yeah, it'll be piping? it'll it'll be entirely done with grading. With grading. Can I ask is is this going to be a rental property or condominiums or what? Uh, yes, it's going to be a rental property. And okay. my my intention is that you know my company will retain ownership. We we manage our own properties in house with a management team, and uh, you know we'll contract out probably the plowing and the mowing, and uh, we'll do you know address basically other exterior interior issues as they come up. Okay, so if we require conditions for maintaining the 
Oh, the retention, area. Area. Yeah, the retention area. Yeah, yeah. The retention area, then you would be responsible. I was yeah, absolutely. thinking it was a condominium, we need a management plan, and that was going to be. No, I'm, I'm happy to provide a management plan if that's something the board's interested no, I, in. I think we can just, if you know what's there, and as long as you're, you're owning, well, I shouldn't speak for the board, but from my point of view, um, as long as there's one entity. But if it were a condominium, then I think it would have to be spelled out in more yeah. detail. Yeah. So you've Manage got the, management. As long as we have the plan and know what's supposed to be there, then somebody mm -hmm. can enforce it. Mm -hmm. I think that, you know, from the perspective that if the building were going to be turned into condos, I'm pretty sure there'd probably be some additional permitting that would have to happen. And I think at that point, the board would maybe have an opportunity to you know, inquire on a management plan. I'm just kind of thinking out loud. It's, it's, uh, yeah, well, let's see if it's an issue first. I want to just make sure the rest of the board is aware. We, of course, we did send word of this to all the other um, boards and committees in town, ask for any comments. Uh, the only comment received was from the um, highway superintendent. Uh, and I'll just see if I... yes, and I'm sharing. Hopefully, you're seeing on screen what came in from Keith. He has no existing is no issues with the existing driveway. He said the only concern he has on the property is the existing large maple trees. Mm -hmm. And so I'm I was looking at that, Mr. O'Bear, and I'm trying to see. I was. I wasn't sure where on this plan those <laughs> trees are and why he was talking about. Them. So there, there is one significantly deteriorated old maple that's up on River Road, okay. and it's probably like maybe halfway. It might even be on the other parcel. To be honest, it's over here across yeah, this dividing line. It, it's, yeah, I think so, and it's you know it's fairly close to the road. We did lose a big big uh, limb last year and i had i think i had the the landscape company remove it but the tree does need to come down and i i do i do recognize that and that that will be part of our process okay and i believe that, that's that, the, i believe it's the only one though i know there's maybe some other tree work that yeah. should be done on the some of the abutters uh on, behind the building i know there's a a tree that probably needs to be cleaned up yeah maybe uh, it's it could be that Keith's use of the plural trees was in error and he really just, it would be perfectly grammatical if he meant the is the existing large maple tree singular. Is that- no, it, is, it is just a single tree. Okay, okay, very good. So to be clear, uh, Bob, you're going to, your, your plan is to remove that large maple tree. Absolutely. Uh, if if it if it can't be saved, but it looks like it's too far gone to me. It looks like it's been struck by lightning or something. And it's, it's pretty far gone. It's pretty far gone. Keith, yeah, Keith is also the tree warden. If that helps. Oh, excellent. <laughs> okay. Um, there is a smaller tree closer to the intersection of Christian Lane and River Road. Um, is that coming or going? I don't have any intentions to remove any trees that don't that aren't damaged or um, I don't, I don't think there's any trees that need to come down other than that one that's badly rotted. I don't have any plans to remove any other trees. The one that's closer to the Christian Lane intersection actually can, especially depending on the time of the year, block site views. So I didn't know if that was planning on being trimmed up to clear the site view. It's, it's a lovely small maple tree. It's pretty bushy right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, we could take a look at that if it's an issue for the board. Is Sarah, your concern about that tree related to the addition, uh, potential addition of this shrubbery screen, the screening shrubbery as well? And just general I'm not about sure. I'd love more information on how, what that shrubbery is and how high it would be. It will grow too. Because I think the concern is really about a driver approaching River Road on Christian, looking to the left to 
you know, make sure they're not going to pull out in front of oncoming traffic. Is that right, Sarah? Right. And there is currently a tree there that can block. Okay. Depending on the weight of the leaves and the snow load. But yes, so how it interacts with that right. buffer on that side right. and how far back from River Road would be, just to make oh, sure the sight lines good. are clear. That is a nasty little intersection sometimes. Yeah. Judy, do you think that it I think might be, be reasonable? Nice I was going to ask if you think it would be reasonable that we might consider a, a condition that uh, about ensuring that there is adequate site for drivers um, approaching the Christian River Road intersection. We could do that, but let's let's hear first about yeah. what he's planning to plant both in both yeah. sides yeah, of the property. They're mostly low growing shrubs and some ornamental low, uh, small trees. It, uh, you know, on page uh, U3, it basically gives uh, some visual aids. I'm sharing U3 now. Um, Does it, it gives in have any specimen types? I I, I have to admit for that I didn't find it, but I was looking on the computer and it was hard to read. No, we didn't. We didn't specify specific plants. We just gave sort of a descriptive low growing. Uh, the west side berm shows that buffers the parking area. Does show some low growing ornamental trees. So if you look into the lower left corner, you can see sort of like a diagram layout mm -hmm. of a planting. There's nothing that's really a, any thick growing hedges or anything like that. These are all sort of a mix of low growing <laughs> decorative perennials and some grasses and perhaps some, you know, small to medium decorative trees, light birch or uh, something else that's native. I've heard some concern about headlights. Is yes, the, that is me, Judy. I, Mr. O'Bear, I'm your neighbor to the west. And okay. I'm, I'm Can you identify yourself? I'm concerned with 23 sets of headlights shining into my bedroom at night. Well, it would only be half of those because it's, it's it would be 12 or 13. It's really only required. So, so first of the parking, we have additional spots. I don't think we'll have 23 cars in there at every night because there's only or nine even apartments. Two sets of, even two sets of headlights will shine into my house. Could mm -hmm. you could you consider planting something a little higher than? Oh, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, we we could we could put a privacy fence along the property line for that stretch of the parking lot if that's something that you know. Well, was, I'm not was, even I'm not even concerned with a. a a fence of any kind, but little larger greenery. We could, we could, yeah, we could grow. We we could plant some larger grasses uh, with some some larger stuff that's going to bush out and it and needs stay. to be around deciduous. I, Jane, you might really want a low fence there. Yeah. Oh, maybe even a low fence, but I would like planting green plantings a little higher than two or three feet. Sure, I think I think this side does show higher than two or three feet. Um, I think we're looking at, you know, if you look at the parking diagram, some of those trees are, are fairly good size. I mean, obviously they won't, it takes a little while for them to grow that size. Oh, you know, that's be, it. If you but, get a, uh, if you get shrubbery two or three feet high, yep. it's going to take seven or eight years before it's going to be blocking the headlights. It, it certainly does. So, I mean, may, you know, maybe, maybe some sort of privacy screening with a fence on that side of the property would be appropriate and we're not you know we're not opposed to that by any means well i would appreciate your consideration absolutely we certainly don't want headlights shining in your in your bedroom my windows. bedroom <laughs> absolutely not uh I, I believe i believe your house is a little bit more elevated than this site if i'm not correct it is it is, it is. so that'll be that'll definitely play to our advantage to uh, you know, the, the lights may not impact you as much as you know if if it was a level site. So I think that's to our to my advantage. 
um, especially with shielding the light, I, I think it won't be very difficult to accommodate you. I'm just wondering if arborvitae would work well there. They they certainly may be may be an appropriate choice. Now, Mr. O'Bear, can I can I get on to ask you a question? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, you, can you please identify yourself for Mary? Uh, Bill Orlowski. I'm I'm the other neighbor on the Christian Lane. Okay. Now, you're doing this hedge or whatever for Jane for the lights and all this. Can yep. we can, I'm I every time there's an activity, the lights will shine into my yard. From, from your parking lot and the cars going in there. Now okay. I would like a buffer, a buffer on my side, on Christian Lane side to your lot. So for I the parking know. area right here. Yes. We, we can add we can add some plantings there as well. Now I don't know uh, if a if a berm, if a berm would maybe uh, a fence on it. And probably the abravites. If you look on the other side of the road, there's nice abravites. And every mm -hmm. time, every time you have an activity right now there, or with your septic system in the back, uh, the lights flash. There's a a large siren that goes off, and I see the light uh, from my house. It, it's I just walk out and I, and I see all this. So I, I would like you to consider either a berm on Christian Lane, uh, abravites or, or fence or all of the above. It can be put there to, to shield the me from seeing all this. Okay. I, I don't, um, could I just ask a clarification question? I want to just better understand the extent of screening that you're asking for. Are you proposing screening really just, and I hopefully you can see my, my pointer moving in the display on the map. So basically screening the, um, the Southern edge of the parking area, or are you also looking for screening, you know, basically up along the uh, North side of the, you know, this Northern edge up to river road. Uh, how much screening, I guess, is what I'm just trying to get clarity from you on, please. Where's, show us where your house is. My, my house is right right there, right on the opposite side of, of the parking lot on Christian okay. Lane. Okay. Is it across from the driveway or is it closer to across, Jane's house? It's across from my house. Okay. So screening down below. I mean, the lights, the, the, the headlights are going to be coming out of the driveway no matter what. Once you turn into the parking lot, they're going the other direction. Yeah. They're, they're, they're aiming west. So there's not really, I mean, and, and I don't expect that, you know, we have nine one-bedroom apartments. I don't expect there to be all that much traffic, to be honest. Um, you know, you're talking about occasional someone comes and leaves. I don't. I don't think it's going to make very much impact. And I think that maybe we're we're sort of our expectations are not in line with 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 what sort of the actual flow is going to be. I don't think there's going to be there's not going to be any events there. This isn't going to be like when it was an office building or like when it was a school. There's only going to be you know. At, at best, if there's nine couples that live there, you have 18 people. Um, and that's highly unlikely that there'll be nine couples. <laughs> so you're probably talking about 12 people that, um, you know, if, if they're working folk who most likely they will have to be to be able to afford an apartment where they live on their own, then they're gonna be coming and going at regular work time hours. So um, I don't really think that, you know, of course I want to accommodate everyone's concerns, but I don't think there's going to be very much light pollution. You mentioned upscale apartments. What do you exactly mean by that? I don't, I don't know who mentioned that, to be honest. It's a, 
it's, I think it I think it was said that we were upscaling the building, meaning that we were taking a uh, 124 year old building and renovating it to bring it up to date. So we are going to be making nine brand new apartments with all new finishes and nice kitchens and nice bathrooms uh, that are going to be available for lease. So. Um, I'll just point out that nine upscale residential units is actually language on the site. Yeah, I think my, my, I guess my assistant put that in. Yeah. Upscale, new, refreshed. It's apparently some people don't like that word. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I like the word, but I want to know what you mean by it. Yeah, I, I mean, we're, we're, we're making nine brand new apartments where every, everything is new. So we have uh, nine updated, modernized uh, housing units available for the community that are all been refreshed. There's a extremely outdated housing stock in all of Franklin County uh, that is, is sort of driving a big part of the uh, housing shortage because the there have been some studies done by the uh, the the group up in Franklin County uh, that shows it's just there's there's a a large percentage of available units have not been updated in the last thirty or forty years. So when we say upscale, we mean that we're coming and we're we're renovating nine brand new apartments. Yeah, the word upscale connotes you know high end, expensive you know, targeting a particular um, socioeconomic, yeah. you know, market. So that's, I think, what people are reacting to. I think Mike had his hand up. Yes, I did. This question's for Brandt. I still have Keith's letter up on my screen. I do not have the site oh, number back is up. That, is, that sh is that so? I'm, I'm showing. I have, funny. I have the plan. I have the plan. Okay. So well, maybe I'm that's you. Um, now I'm just shifting for everybody. I'm showing the impact. Well, this is the impact statement. I'm now I have the displaying Keith's email. And now I'm going to go back to the plan. Hopefully, as I make these switches, they're reflected on all your screens shortly after I make them. Mike, is that working for you? No, I'm still with Keith's letter. But okay. I'll, without the plan right in front of me, I do have a couple of concerns. And one of them is the one already brought up about uh, sight line. Because we're that small maple, and I'm not sure if I remember correctly, if it's a sugar or a Norway, that when you come to a stop at the stop line at the light by law and look to the left, you cannot see coming down southerly on River Road. Because I have, I use that uh, intersection every day to and from work with my existing uh, house down there right across the road trying to cross. And it is a very, at times, tenuous situation because I've almost had bicyclists sl uh, slide into the side of the vehicle because they're blinded right in that tree when it leaps out. Mm -hmm. And judging, I'm a little hesitant with I can't visualize on plan versus ground in my head where that where that hedge is going to be because I'm getting reminiscent of the intersection of uh, Sugarloaf Street extension with River Road where the stop sign is there in the triangular house that has the uh, they're about five foot tall green seasonal uh, shrubs all the way around it that if you stop there you cannot look far enough past that corner as well to see if there's oncoming traffic. And there's been a few near misses there as well from myself and other people I know in town. Mm -hmm. So I'm just wanna make sure that whatever's there now or whatever's going to be added is in such a way that when you come to stop at that stop sign, you can look left and look unimpeded up River Road to the north. I think we can certainly make that a condition. And mm -hmm. I don't wanna speak for Keith, but he's, because of his highway department responsibilities, he's quite sensitive to sight lines. So my guess is if he thought that were a problem, he would have mentioned it. But um, 
but we will certainly make that a condition. Yeah, sometimes things, I know some, uh, some horticultural uh, publications say how big certain plants or uh, trees and shrubs can get, but there are the uh, few occasions where they ex exceed those particular growing parameters. So well, I think if we just if we just talk about maintenance of sight lines, uh, maybe Keith can give us a a formal definition. But I think as long as I think probably we're better off to say maintain the sight line than to specify a height. But I could be wrong. Yeah, because I was trying to see in my mind, Judy, like about where the stop sign would have been on that plan in yeah. relationship to where Mr. O'Bear was saying that that particular shrubbery and plantings would be. And without having the stop sign on there with the line, it's kind of hard to tell if it would if it would be a problem or not, because River Road does have a fairly large highway layout being laid out as a county road at one point in time. So the, the side road width is pretty wide there. So I don't know how close that is to the actual sideline of the road. Yeah, and the, the property line is well is back from the road too because of the town right of way, so. So that's one of my, one of my biggest concerns. And I do appreciate the screening on that particular side against my property across the road. So it's just, I'm more concerned about the safety issue because there have been three vehicles that have ended up through the garage and the workshop there and a lot of other near misses and accidents at that corner that has been witnessed by family over the years. Any other comments? No, I think that's pretty much all I have that, like I say, from what I've seen and what he's trying to do, he's trying to be neighborly and whatnot. So that's, like I say, my biggest concern is the safety of the sight line, but, but I really do enjoy the plantings being there and, and breaking up the building a little bit and turning it into more of a, uh, like a residential feel instead of an industrial feel. Yeah, it, it does need, it does need to be softened a little bit. And one last thing for Brant. Now I just have a blank black screen. I I tried tried logging in. Again? Yeah, I don't know. Coming in again. Yeah, I tried stopping sharing and starting it back up again, hoping that would bring you back to life, Mike. But unfortunately, Gretchen is my computer person at work. They the IT department fears my phone calls because I have the worst luck with computers. <laughs> yeah, I mean the you can if you're a Okay, so maybe then you can't go ahead and access the town website and download the map while we're having this conversation, but um, I'm sorry you're not able to see it, but everyone no, else can. Well, maybe if he just left the meeting and came back in. Yeah, that would be worth a try if he can do that without Gretchen. I can try, well, we'll see what happens if just, you don't uh, Just that. click on the, go to the agenda on the town website at the today's date and click on the link and Sarah should let you in. Okay, I will, I will. do that. But if I don't make it back in, I want to thank you all for your uh, your time and uh, listening to comments and concerns. Excuse Let's, me, but just for the minutes, the uh, inter the intersection that we're talking about of two roads that are could be hazardous and already have been, that was Christian, Christian Lane, Lane and, River Road. and River Road. Thank you. Bob, I have a question. Is one ADA space adequate? I I don't know uh, what code says. I here. believe it is what's required based on the, the occupancy of the okay. building. Um, you know, those are, uh, there's a chart on page two that uh, page, well, it's, it's U1 of the site plan. There's a chart or not a chart, but a, a visual that gives the uh, zoning summary regulation requirements. So we list the town regulations, uh, what's required for a 60,000 square foot site, and then what the proposed site is. It's 56,000 square feet. Uh, the lot frontage, the setbacks, the impervious area, 
the green open space percentage, building coverage, total disturbed area, driveway aisle width, the parking spaces, the number of ADA parking spaces that are required are one, uh, and the landscape and summer are to be determined. Okay, thank you. Anything else? I do have one question. Um, my name's Carrie. I'm also at the 214 Christian Lane address. Um, are these going to include low income Section 8 housing? Uh, you know, we actually can't discriminate against someone based on whether or not they have Section 8 that's uh, against the fair housing laws. So I honestly, I don't know. Okay. My concern lies with um, quiet enjoyment of my residence, which is our laws in the, in the state. So Ab absolutely. That's my We're, biggest concern. Yeah, that's, that's our top priority as well. And it's right in our leases and rental agreements that uh, our tenants as well have the right to peaceful enjoyment of the premises. So that's uh, all sort of in standard management language. We don't we don't expect any big parties here. Carrie, I think that might be a better question for the ZBA because we can really only deal with safety and lighting and site the exterior we, we don't have much to say about the interior or gotcha this was my first one that I was on. that, that's why i'm kind of interested in the hedge on the other side on christian lane from the parking lot for the yeah. lighting lighting and safety also so i i would really like that to be considered to something if you're planning uh, on the other side to either put the abravites or something or make a, a border of something there also. Mm -hmm. So I, I would really like that. When you say when you say other side. The Christian which, Lane side where I am boarded right yeah. right next to the parking lot. Yeah, I'm okay. on the well, other. We've, we've I think we've covered that pretty well. Yeah. Well I'd like that really considered so any other comments from the public? Yes, I have one more thing, Judy. I want to thank uh, Brant because I did leave and come back. And after Sarah let me back in, I do have the plan back up in front of me now. And I'm able, I'm looking at that hedge on the, would be the east side against River Road. It mm -hmm. looks like it's back far enough, but that maple tree will definitely be uh, be something of, a, of, of an issue to take a look at, Mr. O'Bear, just as yeah. you stop there where the line is and look to your left, especially once it leaps out. And if you're in a low vehicle, that it does kind of, the hedge looks far enough back that I think that is okay. But I think that tree is the, is the one thing I still have a concern with after being able to look at the plan again. Sounds like people want the tree to come down. No, not down. <laughs> if you trim it up so you can see underneath it because those yep. branches right now are only like less than a foot off the ground because it was never pruned going up i think yep. it was almost a wild start by the way it's growing it it, it may be consider it done uh, okay do you have any idea how far the berm for your parking area will be up from my boundary I, I'm sorry, I don't know. Is this back on the west yeah, side of the property? Back on that side. On the west side. Uh, well, we're, there, we're not really creating a berm. We're creating more of a retention area to collect any runoff from the parking <laughs> lot. So it'll be a planting along the side. Uh, well, there is, I guess there is a small, it does show a small berm to prevent the runoff or to, to direct it into the, uh, into the planting. It does, it does actually call it a burp, so I, I'm sorry I misspoke on that. But uh, do I have any idea how high it's going to be? No, how the how distance from the property it, line. How far it will be from my property line. So are we talking on the west side here? Yes, uh, on the west. I can't tell on the screen like here. Let me see if I have a scale. I, I can check my plan here with a scale on it if you just give me a second. 
am I correct in reading this map to say that it's basically 20 feet, there's a side setback of 20 feet marked on the map. Yeah, and there you go. That is so the 20 foot. That's at least 20 feet from the abutter property. And okay. then it, there'll be a few additional feet beyond 20 feet to get to the edge of the parking lot and the retention area. So does that answer your question? Yes, Jane? that does, thank you. I think it's it probably goes without saying, but I assume that the the septic system and all of that, the reuse of the existing septic system, all pass muster with the uh, yeah. This 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 is actually the septic plan as well. So this is stamped by the engineer. You can see the notes on the septic system over here. Yeah. We're going to be uh, reusing an existing five thousand gallon tank. Uh, we're going to be installing a new pump chamber with a duplex pump, and then we're utilizing the existing leach field, which has all been certified and stamped by the engineer. Okay. Any other First, comments? Mr. Orlovsky was saying about an alarm. There's a is There's there a, going to continue to be an audible alarm? No, it's a strobe, I believe. Okay, I believe so it's, it's a, a light red alarm. strobe. So there's a pump chamber. So uh, during some of the heavy rains, occasionally the pump chamber will get infiltrated by water. That's part of the reason we're changing it out because it'll take on groundwater and that will trigger the alarm to go off if the floats get too high. So it's pretty standard. Every house that has a pump system has an alarm. They go off, it alerts the neighbors, great, call me, thank you for saving my septic system and calling me that the alarm was going off, you know? So it's not something that is uh, goes off continuously or normally, it's only if there's a, uh, a hazardous condition and <clears throat> that's what it's for that someone notifies the owner. So will that change, will that change the light not flash and stuff? It shouldn't flash unless there's an unless there's an issue. And if it flashes, I'll make sure you have my cell phone number to call me. Because I, I it's very irritating to me to see that. And it has been in the past. It has went, you know, had a problem there, and I've seen that light. So, so you know, with the upgrades, that theoretically will really only be when there's an emergency. Cor correct. Correct. And Thank my you. phone, my 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 phone number and contact information is on the building. So if there's ever any issue there, please by all means feel free to contact me, and uh, and let me know. When do you expect to have the first occupancy? Um, I mean, this is about a ten month to one year project for us. So um, we're hoping to get started really on on the construction soon i mean we've been cleaning out the building and we removed the old boiler removed all the asbestos uh so we're just trying to get this permitting with the town finalized so we can get started so we expect more, that we expect to start right away one more question i bet everybody's wondering what color are you going to paint the building uh we <laughs> can do we can do a town-wide vote how about that We'll take a town-wide poll. If, if someone from the town wants to set it up, I'm open to, uh, you know. It has to stay blue. It's the blue school. Oh, I don't <laughs> mind that at all. No way. No way. <laughs> I think, uh, I, think yeah, I, I think it's a con highly contested matter that I'm not willing to, <laughs> to comment on right now. Been here long enough. I think we're at the point where maybe we should close the public hearing. Yeah. <laughs> Unless Thank there's you for letting me voice my opinions. Well, that's what they're for, Jane. So I'm glad you felt you could. Um, and I'm glad, sorry we had to postpone it. Um, so I will call the public hearing closed. I don't know if the planning board has any more comments. I have a list of possible conditions, and I suspect that Grant does as well. Um, uh, what I'll do is I'll share a Word. Should it, would it be helpful if I shared a Word document and then we get uh, 
straight on the language versus hoping that Mary just gets it all down right? I think I'll, I think I'll take that as a yes. Oh, uh, there we go. It'll just be a blank. All right. I'll do my best to scribe. Um, so one, there was something about sight lines. And sure sight is S-I-G-H-T. Yeah, that's right. Thank you. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it in my head. Assure. And ensure. E N. Oh. Ensure that sight lines are adequate for um, traffic safety at the river. Does that mean looking, looking river north road? at River Road? Have the alley superintendent sign off on it? Yeah, that could we reference the site, the the highway superintendent, so we at least we have a regu regulatory party. Yeah. <clears throat> How could we say something like, um, would it make sense to obtain approval from the highway superintendent that site lines are adequate? Should we basically should we put putting the wording aside? Should the condition involve obtaining some kind of, you know, written assurance, say, from the highway superintendent? Yeah, I think it. I think it should, and I. I think I would. I would request that it not just be in the plan, but also maintenance. That the. Maybe constructed originally and, and then maintained. Or maybe that's a second condition that the, the Yeah. I'm just playing with the sight this. line, yeah. so it's established. I think sight line is one word too. That's that, that's oh, that sight lines are adequate for traffic safety. Yeah, it's a terrible run on sentence, but it's capturing all the right ideas. Is that right? Maybe you just say it or at the intersection of River Road and Christian Lane. Oh, just, just like yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. What was the next? There were, then there were screening <laughs> issues. Well, can we also ensure that their condition is that they're maintained at the same at the safe height. I think sight line is one word, but you can check that later. Okay, I will check that. Right now, I'm just trying to get all the, the right ideas in the sentences and then fine tune them. Um, uh, so just on the, on the ensuring of the sight lines, is that like, again, is there sort of a regular requirement of checking in with a highway superintendent or we just get the, do get the assurance from the highway department up front and then over time maintain those sight lines without further my involvement? Thought was that, my thought was that he would say they shouldn't be higher than X and then the requirement would be to maintain them at that height. Okay, okay. Um, higher or higher than or closer than to so the. So let me workshop this one with I'm, you. Obtain written I'm, guidance. Go ahead. I'm sort of list, half listening to you, Bob. If I if I would could, if I could just jump in. I mean, it would almost be simpler to keep it simple, in my opinion, and just yeah. say main. You know, maintain sight lines. Uh, clear. You know, maintain clear sight lines. Uh, per highway department superintendent. And then it's just an, oh, it's simple. It's up to his discretion. If there's an issue, he'll tell tell me there's an issue. He can notify if it, if it runs with the, with the right. site plan approval, if there's a new owner someday and there's sight lines are an issue, the highway superintendent can just say, there's an issue with the, with the sight lines. We're gonna, we need to clean them up. Um, as opposed to trying to like specifically define yeah, I, I think some, in some some instances it's easier for everyone if there's some flexibility to how it's the language puts it into play. It's just, just my two cents. Makes sense. I think 
Reasonable. What do you think about this wording? I think that's perfect. <laughs> Judy, what do you think? I said I thought it was great. Okay. All right. So did Tom. Go. Okay. Uh, screening. So there is, I, I definitely am, it sounded like there was some suggestions about screening both for, for Jane, basically along the um, Western edge and then along the edge of along Christian Lane, but just related to the parking lot. And I also heard some mixture of plantings and and fencing so i'd like to see if we can sort all of that out so i didn't have any immediate plans to install fencing but per per the neighbor on the west side and on the across the street it sounds like sounds like the west side would really prefer some it's already an they already have an elevated site our site is probably dropped i would guess three feet maybe almost Okay. Um, I think with like a small privacy fence along that edge of the property line would definitely take care of it. It's just a matter of what the neighborhood wants to see. I mean, sometimes you start putting up fences and berms and, right. you know, and it starts to take away from the feel of the neighborhood versus uh, just nat natural vegetative buffer um, if you want to. You know, if you, I, I'm, I'm open to either way. So, you know, I just, I want to accommodate the neighbor's concerns right. on, on both sides of the property. So this is still very drafty, but yep. is that what we're saying? Sort of low privacy fencing along the entire length of the Western edge of the parking area? Uh, I would like some green fencing. So that would be on Plant the... Fence. On the That's on the your edge. side, you Jane, prefer, the fencing. Jane, you would prefer planting to fencing. I would. So okay. right now, right now we do have a, a planting on the site plan scheduled for for that area. I think it just yeah. you want to make sure that the, the the plantings provide adequate screening. Exactly for the headlight shield, to shield the neighbors from light pollution or from the parking lot. So again, I think that, you know, if we keep the language in there, it also leaves the door open for the neighbor to say, hey, uh, it's not working. Can you add some additional screening? Um, you know, again, with the understanding that some screening, it takes, it does take some time for them to be established, but we could definitely put in plantings that are not, you know, tiny tiny plants that are going to take years to grow we'll yeah. we'll get uh you know medium-sized plantings and i can look at again the grasses are nice because they grow up and you can leave them long through the winter and they do provide additional screening we have them at several properties now where we've created privacy screening around uh parking areas on some of our properties in miller's falls and the grasses are nice because yes they do die off but if you leave them all winter, they provide great screening. And then in the spring, they get cut back as they start to grow again. But uh, we could, you know, do a combination of of uh, different materials to provide that that screening and keep it really attractive looking. Right. Um, now, do you want to keep that word low? Well, since we've got the elevation change between the parking lot and uh, how about me we could say we could just leave it as plantings yeah, um, again i'm i'm open to input i don't I think just, uh, I'm... just plantings and i would suggest adding year round it to before privacy yep to provide year round privacy and screening good we and should we put should we add to the west and the south so that we can accommodate yeah is it Bar barbara yeah, as long as it's as long as it's yeah. planning then it can be extended to the south 
I would love that. I would love that. So if we if we say you know year round privacy screening for the abutter to the west and south around you know at the at the parking parking lot area. So well, maybe being... this could just be for simplicity a, se a, a separate condition. So we use this condition to address the abutter to the west. Okay. And then we do something similar where yeah, now we right. say the plantings are along. Now would we be saying along the entire length of the southern edge? Of just the parking area. Yeah. Just say along the along the southern edge of the parking area. I don't think you need to say the entire length because that gets confusing. Okay. Would you In fact it might be confusing I... up above? So you prefer that, Judy, for the yeah, I think so. So you're not. Well, it does say of the parking area, but I don't. Yeah. As long, as, the driveway, the the parking area shorter. goes from the driveway to the boundary. Along the southern. I'm sorry, Carl. Could you say that again? Bill. Bill. Oh, yeah. Bill. I apologize, Bill. From. Christian Lane side from the one hedge to the other. So the parking, basically right in front of the parking area to the yeah. entrance. Yeah. That would block the whole area there. Southern area of the parking area up to the driveway entrance. Is that entrance. what you're saying, Bill? Yes. Yes, at an entrance. Plantings along the southern edge of the parking area up to the driveway entrance, mm -hmm. sufficient to provide year round privacy screening for the abutter to the south. No, yes. That looks fine to me. I see. We also want to. Condition to remove the damaged maple tree. As well as our standard conditions about approval from all boards. Um, and the, the one, the standard historical commission, well, I don't think they're doing any digging, so probably that one needn't be there. Um, Give me a moment to just pull one of those up because I think it would be fair and appropriate for Bob to be able to see that language live, right? Um, when was the last time? Mr. Uh, Lebert, the lighting, there'll be 24 hour lighting in the parking lot on the and on the building. Uh, I was going to actually ask if there was a preference on that. I mean, I think I have some liability that I do have to provide lighting uh, on the entrances of the building uh, 24 hours in the parking area. Uh, I'm not, I don't actually know the answer to that. I think I do have to light it all night. Like, like a dust to dawn sensor type thing just for liability and safety reasons but it is all down lighting so uh there shouldn't be really any light pollution into the air or uh into the neighbor's yards or anything like that low scale low scale lighting would be ideal because the yep. street light that is there lights up the whole front of the building yeah i'm sure i'm sure it does so i don't i don't think that um you know the, the lighting will definitely be better than what was on there before with those big halogens um so yeah it's all all down lighting with low low impact thank you all right i think i pulled the language of interest from another previous site plan yeah, in this case, I think we also need to be specific that it needs special permit approval from the ZBA. And it's encompassed in that, but I think um, I, I think it's important that we mention that specifically. Plan. So when you say the plan, the site plan, 
Because isn't the site no, plan the, being approved tonight? No, I, no, I, the project must be obtained. The, the, pro, the project, okay. Oh, so the project. No, no, the second one, the plan, the plan. Must receive approvals from all the appropriate boards and committees, but the project, the special permit must be issued or must be obtained from the Zoning Board of Appeals for the project. And, you know, I'm just remembering, we've gotten a recommend, recommended language from the Historical Commission. Yeah, but it references digging and I don't think they're doing it. Yeah, that's, I think you're right. Well, yeah, so, so you think this language that I've highlighted, Judy, is sufficient? Because I can't easily. Yeah, well, that's that's the standard language, yeah. Somehow I, not sure it's necessary here, but it's not, it doesn't hurt either. Right. I just want to see if uh, one quick second here. Oh. Yeah, you're right. So I just found, I don't think I'm sharing it with you. I found the letter from the Historical Commission where they recommended. I'll tell you. We what. voted to do that, Grant. That's, we've, we voted to include it in all as a standard yeah. requirement. Well, this is the language that I think, let me just stick that in so you can see what I'm talking about. Yeah, I see it. I I think that's fine. This. This was in a letter to us from Donna Wiley. Okay. Well, either works. So that, that's probably better. That's That's the one we approved. Okay, so I'm going to delete five, this highlighted five, and leave six. Mm -hmm. Going once, going twice, gone. All right. Are these the conditions? Anything else? Uh, I just have a question on number six. So if it's referring to the plan being the site plan, what other what other approvals are required? Well, if this if this is if this is site plan approval. Well, Board of Health. Um, but isn't that a separate plan? No, because we require their input. Separate, okay. It's encompassed in this. This is where this is where it. I mean, you would need that one for building permit, but. Yeah, right, um, right. So I would need a I would need a septic sign off for the billing permit. So I guess I'm just confused that, because but, it sort of leaves but, it open as if this is not the site plan approval. Which well, it is. the appropriate boards and committees are defined in the are defined in the in the bylaw, and they had 45 days from submission to to get back. And I think uh, we must have we yeah. must have reach that so, by now. So to, to clarify that, Bob, in the site plan review bylaw, which yep. defines how we are doing what we're doing tonight for you, um, it says that we have to transmit copies of your materials to appropriate town boards and municipal officials and give them 45 <laughs> days to comment. Right. And right. it specifically refers to the Conservation Commission the Zoning Board of Appeals, the Board of Health, the Historical Commission, the Agricultural Commission, the Highway Superintendent, Fire Chief, or the Building Inspector. Okay. Now, not all of them may have anything to say about your project. You know, there may be no Conservation Commission stake in any of this. We yeah. give them if they the don't get back in 45 days, then it's right. assumed they approve. I got, I got you. I, I just wanted to understand the... Yeah, no... Okay, this looks 
good to me. So I'm gonna make a motion. Do I have a motion to approve? I will move that we approve the site plan for 219 Christian Lane with the conditions, with these seven conditions. Second. All in favor? Can you stop sharing? I can stop sharing. All in favor? Yes. Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Unanimous. Great. Thank you. I appreciate everyone. Well, thank you for being thank you. accommodating and good luck with the ZBA. Excellent. Thank you. Nice project. So, Bob, just to let you know, we'll get you a signed site plan approval document. Give us some little bit of time to sort that out. Not a yep. lot, a few days. Yep. You know, requires physical signatures and things. Mm -hmm. These conditions that you've seen will be part of that. You'll get it electronically. You'll be able to get a physical copy. But and I will be in touch with you by email when all of that's ready. Okay, great. And then and then it's up to me to record it, right? Yeah, perfect. Um, so do I get? Do I have to submit a mylar version, or yeah. I just record? No, the that's that's for an A and R. I don't think it's just. So it's just the letter. It's just the letter that gets recorded with the vote. I don't even think it's recorded. I think you need to show it to the building inspector. Yeah. I can help. Chris, um, the special permit will need to be recorded at the registry of deeds, but not the plan, just the document and the okay. site plan approval keep it safe but uh it does not need to be recorded anywhere okay fantastic the building inspector will need to see it excellent all right well thank you all for your time i appreciate it and uh if anyone is interested to check out the project during construction feel free to reach out good, good luck with it thank yeah. you have a great and night nice to have that building back in back in use absolutely take care thanks again thank you uh, Mary, I have saved the draft conditions. Oh, you're still not doing OneDrive, but I have them in the OneDrive folder for the address now. Okay. You can email them to her, Brent. I will email them to her, yes. Email still works, thank you. Okay. Uh, let's see. I think the next item on the agenda is the public hearing for DMCTC. Proposed zoning changes and I hate to ask, is it either I can step away for just two minutes um, or we pause for two minutes? I'm going to step away. <laughs> uh, well, we can, what we can do is explain to people who are unfamiliar with the process that this is a zoning bylaw submitted, zoning bylaw change, uh, an addition for a use for limited medical marijuana. It's submitted by a property owner, which is allowed under Massachusetts law. Um, the wording is theirs. They have discussed it with the planning board. <laughs> Our role is to make a recommendation um, at the end of the public hearing, whether we approve, disapprove, or make no recommendation before it goes to town meeting, we'll go to town meeting. Um, we have members of the MCTC and um, their consultant here. Um, I also have members of the public. so. Um, I think since Brant is quite familiar with the language and he's back anyway, so you didn't miss anything. You can still vote. Okay. You know, what can I say? I've been hydrating a lot. So what would you, what do I need to do? Well, we, we're turning, I'm just about to turn the meeting, the hearing over to the applicants or the proponents, I guess, in this case. So I don't know who is speaking. Chris? Um, yes, hi, I'm Chris Chamberlain, civil engineer with Berkshire Design Group, who's been helping uh, DMCTC um, put 
forward this language for proposed zone change. Um, thought someone from that group was going to be here, but he must be uh, held up. Um, so I can share the language if that's best. Uh, right now, I have it pulled up. Um, Maybe just give a very brief description of what it's trying to do first. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so in the current structure of the um, zoning Waitley zoning bylaw, um, under the, the sort of multiple uses related to marijuana, uh, which, since it's been legalized a few years ago now, um, and those are divided up into cultivation, uh, manufacturing, and retail. Um, and today we're specifically talking about that, that middle piece of it, uh, manufacturing, which essentially covers um, after the plants have been harvested um, and, and typically dried at that point at a cultivation facility, um, the, uh, the plants that are not being sold as a direct flower product are sent to a marijuana manufacturer, which may in fact be the same organization that did the growing. Um, and you know, one of the primary uh, components of that is extraction of the different oils, uh, which can then be used in a variety of ways to create different products. Um, and then those products are uh, produced and packaged and then uh, transferred from the manufacturer to a retailer, which then sells them in a store. And under the current uh, zoning bylaws, uh, all types of marijuana manufacturing are lumped together in a single use marijuana manufacturing, which is then allowed uh, by special permit in the industrial zone and the commercial industrial zone. Um, and for the most part, that's sort of the appropriate place for it to be. There are the most common methods of marijuana extraction, uh, utilize some hazardous materials, uh, butane, uh, compressed carbon dioxide, a handful of others are commonly used to extract those oils out. Um, and those are really truly industrial processes that, that are appropriate uh, to be sort of cordoned off into those more industrial areas. Uh, there are a subset of manufacturing activities that uh, involve non-hazardous materials. Um, and you know, these, uh, some of the uh, examples that we've included is uh, 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 the production of marijuana-infused food products uh, in a commercial kitchen setting. Uh, there's a method known as bubble hash, uh, where that extraction is conducted just based on regulating temperatures. Uh, in, in fact, literally dunking the plants in ice water and stirring them around to get the, uh, the oil separated and then screening that physically to separate the oil from the plant and the water. And these sorts of uh, activities are you know, non-hazardous and low impact. Um, and so uh, DMCTC, uh, hoping to potentially take advantage of this zoning bylaw, but uh, you know, uh, applying it uh, broadly to the uh, zoning so that uh, any landowner in the commercial zone would be able to take advantage of it, is proposing to create a second, more restricted definition of marijuana manufacturer that is limited to only those non-hazardous, low impact uh, types of uses, uh, types of, of manufacturing, and allow those to be done, again, by special permit and only if approved through all of the appropriate boards and committees, but to allow it uh, in the commercial zone, which is currently not allowed um, during in, in the current structure. Um, and so there, there are sort of two sides of this. Uh, you know, the, the first one is that uh, this is a way that um, these sort of, um, let's say, lower barrier to entry um, uh, commercial activities uh, around this industry uh, can be added on uh, potentially to existing commercial spaces. Um, you know, one example that DMCTC cited in, in the letter of support that they submitted to the board uh, was that, uh, you know, someone who owns a property that has a commercial kitchen on site 
already for you know regular food purposes would then have the opportunity to expand that business perhaps during off hours um, and utilize that space with uh, relatively limited uh, capital expenditure to to then take um, uh, the, um, marijuana oils and use them to create food products as, as a value added activity. Um, so it creates the opportunity for those um, sort of smaller scale uh, business opportunities in the commercial zone that you have today. Um, and the other side of it is that we see that this really aligns um, the marijuana uh, manufacturing processes with the way that the zoning bylaw already um, sort of regulates other industrial uses. Um, the zoning bylaw has multiple uses for industrial activities, um, and critically, there is um, a land use that captures industrial activities that do not involve the use of hazardous materials. And it allows that in the commercial zone where it restricts uh, other types of industrial uses that uh, do involve hazardous materials to those industrial and commercial industrial segments. So really we're breaking this, we're proposing to break this marijuana manufacturer land use into general manufacturing, which includes everything, and then this more limited land use, which would be just those activities that are non-hazardous, would be allowed in the commercial zone, uh, much like non-hazardous general industrial uh, practices are allowed in the current zoning. And you know, just, just to state it explicitly, it's, it's right here at the top, is we are not talking about any of the agricultural residential zones. We're talking about activities that are currently allowed by special permit in industrial and commercial industrial, we are proposing to allow the, allow the non-hazardous activities by special permit in the commercial zone where they're currently prohibited. Um, and then, you know, we spent uh, quite a bit of time um, both talking with the uh, planning board in previous public meetings about some of the potential concerns, um, as well as scratching our own heads as to writing zoning language that would really clearly separate those land uses. Um, and then also, uh, you know, a few more items that uh, give both the planning board and ZBA um, the information and, uh, and uh, power to ask for some, you know, verification um, of the different activities during the review process to make sure that there's some assurance that the uh, that this land use would be applied the way it's intended. Um, and so the specific changes that we are proposing are laid out right in front of you. Uh, the first one is to add an entry to the table of uses, which would be this manu marijuana manufacturer limited, which would be allowed by special permit in the commercial zone, as well as the industrial and commercial industrial, as I was just referring to. And then um, we, in order to allow that appropriately, we're suggesting other text be added to the marijuana section of the zoning bylaw. And you know, as the board members uh, are very familiar with, uh, this is the section that lays out a number of definitions um, as well as requirements of applicants uh, that are proposing any of these land uses. And so under definitions, we are proposing the addition of the text that defines what marijuana manufacturer limited is. Um, and so the, uh, this is based initially off of the definition of marijuana product manufacturer, which is an entity meeting the definition, uh, I'm sorry, which, which defines, as I described at the beginning, that sort of middle space between cultivation and retail. And so a marijuana manu product manufacturer limited is first um, an entity that meets that definition of manufacturer and then limited to operations that do not require the use of hazardous materials as part of the manufacturing process. And then uh, we uh, have added additional language to try to uh, define that as clearly as possible for potential applicants, um, as well as trying to make it uh, pretty objective and black and white so that there's not an opportunity to sort of work in the gray areas in between the lines to bring in something that's really intended to be excluded, but may by the letter of the law be allowed. 
And so um, for the first of those, we provide examples of the activities that would qualify for this limited manufacturer land use, which include the production of marijuana infused food products, um, extraction of marijuana using ice water or other non-hazardous and non-flammable materials. So again, excluding all of those hydrocarbons that are sometimes used, the compressed gases, uh, which are potentially hazardous, are not allowed as part of this land use. Uh, filling and capping of products with concentrate that has already been produced, which potentially may have happened off-site. Physical production, meaning physical uh, manipulation of products, such as uh, rolling or creating infusions um, uh, without the use of chemical processes. Um, packaging of finished products, and then warehousing and distribution of those products. Um, and then we took that a step further and are proposing language that, that creates an objective standard for evaluating whether, uh, whether the process is part, uh, includes uh, hazardous materials. Um, and so any of these uh, points, if they're involved, are excluded or prohibited as part of this particular land use. Which, require, uh, which is any process that requires the use or storage of propane, butane, ethanol, and carbon dioxide, which are sort of the, the main um, um, component, uh, main uh, substances that are used in the sort of hazardous manufacturing process. Um, and then we carve out a caveat uh, just so that it's clear that that doesn't include hazardous materials that are normally part of building operations. For example, um, you know, storage of propane is necessary if there are heating or cooking appliances that use propane. Uh, so that's explicitly stated as allowable. It's the manufacturing process that can't have the hazardous materials. And then uh, we refer to um, a chapter of the National Fire Prevention Association Fire Code which um, explicitly regulates certain um, processes uh, that are potentially hazardous specific to the marijuana industry. So this is a chapter of NFPA that was written specifically for man marijuana manufacturing, and it creates additional standards when those hazardous processes are occurring. And we simply state, if it, is if it is regulated by that chapter, then it is by definition hazardous and would be excluded from this limited manufacturing land use. Um, and then uh, this next one is uh, mostly uh, an administrative edit. Uh, the current marijuana bylaw uh, creates a 50 foot setback from property lines uh, for marijuana related projects in general, but it has a reduced setback of 20 feet for retailers when they occur in the commercial district. Um, and uh, that's just uh, reflective, I believe, of the reality of where um, buildings in the commercial district are located, as well as a reflection that uh, in the commercial district, uh, there, there are retail locations that are located closer to the property lines, um, and, and that is not necessarily inappropriate. So there's a reduced 20 foot setback since this land use is also intended to go, is, is intended to be allowed in those same spaces, we want to apply that reduced setback only in the commercial district to this use the same as is applied to retailers. The next section is important during the review process. There's a list of 21 different items that marijuana projects must uh, submit information on to the boards in order to allow them uh, to make uh, decisions under the zoning uh, bylaw for permit applications. Um, they involve everything from um, odor control, water use, energy use, uh, site locations, uh, ownership and management, uh, and those are always required to be submitted for the record and for consideration for the boards. And we've suggested adding um, an additional item when uh, this limited marijuana manufacturing is proposed that a complete list of the processes and activities that are going to be included in that project be presented, um, as well as a list of chemicals and other material inputs. Basically, uh, a show us your homework uh, component uh, that if you're applying for this limited marijuana land use tell us everything that's going to be going on in that facility uh, so that we can verify that it complies with the letter and the intent of this definition. 
Um, and then uh, the last piece is just uh, bookkeeping. Uh, that number nine gets inserted in the list of 21 different items. So we need to renumber those items if this text gets included. Um, and so, you know, again, I just want to emphasize uh, on behalf of DMCTC that this is, we feel, a relatively modest change to zoning. Uh, that proposes uh, the, a modest uh, increase to the potential uh, business and economic activities that may be available in the commercial zone, um, and uh, most, uh, and that it is also uh, consistent with the structure of the existing bylaw for general industrial uses, and then most importantly, uh, as with any marijuana use in the town of Waitley, these uh, this use requires a special permit, requires approval of both the planning board and the ZBA uh, before any sort of project uh, moves forward. Thank you. That was um, a very detailed overview. <laughs> I appreciate it. Are, are there any questions from the public? This is your, this is your forum. Yes, Judy, Mike back there. I do have one question. In the beginning, Chris said something about commercial kish, kitchen. So if somebody else had a business that used a commercial kitchen, they would also have a chance to possibly be able to do this. Now, if that commercial kitchen is selling food to the public, where is the safeguards in this for possible cross-contamination to people that want no part of the marijuana industry? Or is so, that off base for what this is proposing to do and should be asked in another forum? Sure. Um, so the what I would defer to there is the state marijuana regulations, which are incredibly strict um, about control of the product um, and ensuring that um, uh, that there are no cross contaminations that the the product is exactly what it says it is um, and um, lays out the standards for all of those those uh, those um, sorry I'm blanking on the word all of those processes um, so if there were a proposal to use an existing facility as opposed to a newly built or uh, uh, facility, then the state would be reviewing for controls uh, that would ensure all of the security um, as well as health and safety standards for the marijuana production uh, created segregation between that and, and the rest of the business. Um, there would need to be, in fact, um, access controls um, in order to ensure that as the marijuana manufacturer is operating, only those people that are approved under the state regulations are allowed to access any areas where that's going on. Um, so there, there are a lot, uh, there, there are many, many uh, regulations and reviews and inspections of the facility when any type of marijuana project is getting off the ground. Um, and there are multiple points where the state commission uh, reviews all of those plans, um, looking for just those sorts of issues. So it's not a, uh, we don't address it in zoning um, specifically because it's very thoroughly covered under state. Okay, Chris, I guess I quite wasn't clear. I wasn't worried about the marijuana product being contaminated. I was one, I was worried about if it happened to have been a restaurant commercial kitchen in use, and I go into the restaurant, and my regular dinner is yeah. contaminated with marijuana byproducts. Yeah, yeah and, and I think, uh, so I, I did actually mean that in both directions. Um, okay. And, and, I, and I would say that, you know, I, I perhaps am thinking a little too broadly about the idea that the same kitchen would be used for uh, both possible procedures. I think the reality is that the space would need to be segregated between the two operations in order to pass muster with, with the state regulators. Okay, thank you, Chris. That was my confusion. So I appreciate your, uh, yeah, your answer on that yeah, and your thoroughness would... in your presentation. Thank you. Chris, what's the, I've, can you remind me what the licensing fee is for, for a marijuana manufacturer? 
Uh, you mean the state licensing fee? Yeah. I actually don't know. Um, and it's not trivial, though. So I yeah, don't think this is something. The, the licensing fee I is significant. This, I don't see but, muffins doing this in their back kitchen somehow. Yeah. Um, and, and the professional assistance that you need is also uh, quite a bit, I can assure you, that's one of the ones that charges those fees sometimes to put plans together. There's a lot of work that is required um, in order to get these off the ground. Security areas, cameras, uh, screening of all the employees. Correct. But, it, but what is... Uh... I don't know how realistic, but it's a scenario in which, say, an existing um, food retailer, I don't necessarily mean muffins, but you know, they, um, I don't know if, say, Tom's wants to do cannabis infused hot dogs, but th there is a scenario in which an existing business um, expands, adding some new structure, um, creating, you know, meeting all the requirements of uh, the the Cannabis Control Commission for marijuana manufacturing, and but they're going to do this limited style, um, and but it would necessarily be the case that such an additional um, facility augmenting a pre-existing food service operation, they would be required by law to segregate those operations so that there couldn't be the kind of contamination that. Mike is referring to. Yeah, I, I think the the better way to think about it is if I had a facility and there were room to expand it with an addition, but I already had the infrastructure to be bringing in shipments and raw materials of food products, and I had the experience of running a commercial kitchen and complying with those regulations, you know, this could be a, a natural expansion of that business as a separate entity and, and very likely in order to meet the, the requirements a separate space, uh, perhaps even a, a separate building. Thank you. Any other questions? Any questions from the planning board? Shall we close the public hearing? I think so. It seems like at least if the plan the planning board is engaged around this several times now. Maybe you could stop sharing. Oh, Am yes. I sharing? No, I'm sharing. <laughs> okay, somebody is. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Problem with the iPad, I can't see. Right. I can't see anybody if if it's being shared. Um, so I have a proposal, Judy. I wonder what you think, which is we, since we've been, well, you know, you've been our um, lightning rod, I guess, or the, where all the inputs and we've marshaled and, uh, and drafted a, a potential recommendation, well, to the select board. I wonder if it would be useful if we shared that document and had a discussion as a board about the various arguments for and against this. Um, well, I'm assuming the board has read those and certainly sat through all the recommendations. So I would, my proposal would be that we vote and maybe we should talk about, about the shape of the vote. But if Grant would obviously like to go through the document first, I. Well, since the, it hasn't been shared publicly, um, it seems appropriate that we share the document publicly and you know, at least get it on the record. So that's all. And well, then that, that, that will happen anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, I don't know, what do, what do the rest of you feel? Sarah, does it matter? Tom? Oh, what do you mean by review the document? Just read, read through it or, or debate it? Well, I mean, I, I maybe we all have, you know, maybe we're all ready to vote. I don't know. I I would have thought that we might deliberate a little bit and then vote, but maybe we're all ready to vote. Maybe somebody should move that we just vote and we'll see if that's how people feel. What is what is the what is the motion? 
Well, do we want to review, go through the arguments in the, the, the issue is whether we want to go through the arguments in the document before we vote or not. And if we do my thought that, is we, they, they supposedly reflect our, if I did it right, they reflect our, what we've discussed already anyway. Um, Having closed the public hearing, Judy, does that mean that, for example, Chris or other or Mike, if we, if we went through our arguments for and against, would they not be welcome to weigh in on that or comment on that? Because certainly Chris hasn't seen this document, Mike hasn't seen this document, only the planning board members have. So are we have essentially in a session where the hearing is closed and the only ones who get to deliberate are the members of the planning board? I think we closed their their formal. If you know, if they if they want to question something, but but I really think that the purpose of that was for us to hear the public's comments on what they saw, so that we can add that to our our knowledge base. And we had some. Thoughtful comments. Well, why don't we so, just, why, why, why doesn't um, either Judy or Brad uh, read read the document? I'm just gonna in, in, I'm just the, gonna put the, it up here, just so since I have it and I can share my screen. So we've drafted um, most of the text of a of a letter we have to send, a report we have to send to the select board, which would include an indication of whether we the board are recommending that this uh, change be adopted, or we are recommending against it, or, we're new, or we have no recommendation. Is that a, a fair statement, Judy? Yep. We haven't put yes. that text in there because we have not yet voted as a board as to whether we recommend, don't recommend, or have no recommendation. So right now we're sort of deliberating, leading up to a vote on, on that. And then whatever the outcome of the vote is, we finish the revision to this letter and send it to the select board. So that answer your question, Tom, what, what we would be voting on? Yes. Okay. So I think Judy did a great job kind of capturing at the beginning, sort of the background um, uh, and summarizing the, the change and summarizing the planning board's you know, history, if you will, with the proposal. So that's all background from us to the select board. And then based on inputs, all of us provided independently to Judy and her um, wordsmithing. This was distilled to a draft set of arguments in favor and arguments against the proposal. I don't think it's would be accurate to necessarily say that these that each argument, whether in favor or not in favor represents a consensus board position, rather that collectively we've all kind of thrown, offered our opinions, they've been collected in this document. And now- we're I changed the, I changed the introductory sentence to the arguments to say that these were raised during the discussion. Yes. Yes, so it's not saying that this, these arguments represent kind of a consensus position of the board. They are arguments that were raised during the discussion. And I think that's appropriate. So yeah, so, the, so we can see there, were, we've distilled it down to four arguments in favor. This captures the point that we already have a light manufacturing use in, allowed in the commercial district. This is the one that has to do with um, non-hazardous materials. We 
So that's an argument in favor of this change. It's consistent with current zoning practices. No hazardous materials are permitted. So, and the town's processes should be able to assure that. We, it still requires special permit and site review. So we have, so we have oversight and can do what we need to do with respect to maintaining Waitley's character. And then uh, the fourth argument, general argument in favor is that this would create another possible type of tax paying employer in Waitley. And then there were, uh, looks like four arguments against, and I'm just, you know, you can read it, but I'm giving you the thumbnail that we really want to encourage more retail in the commercial zone rather than more industrial. This would be expanding industrial use. That's an argument against at making this change. Second argument against, um, and we did discuss this as a board. Um, we didn't explicitly, the, the language of the change does not require ongoing inspections to ensure compliance and enforcement after operate. So this gets to the argument against about what might change after initial approval. Third argument was, this is really initially going to benefit the proponent, assuming they choose to act on it. And we don't really know how broad a benefit this would be for the town to the extent that we as a planning board should be making changes, keeping foremost in our minds broad benefit to the town. And then the fourth argument is really the fact that the proponent crafted this around their own plan for this kind of manufacturing. And we don't know whether this would um, meet other definitions, if, if there are others, if you know this limited definition is too limited, it's presumably not too expansive. So those are basically a summary of the arguments that we've collectively identified for and against recommending this change. And I'll let the wording stand for itself. I suppose it's fair that we can ask if people want to add others now, since we're in a public meeting. Yeah. This was designed to reflect the comments that have already been made. And I actually have one. Um, it, when, when the initial marijuana uses were put on the table in the zoning, um, the community impact fees were assumed to be a significant revenue source to the town and one that um, would, would be of benefit. And since that time, the legislature has, has uh, curtailed the town's ability to, to um, levy that's the same size of community impact fees. So, so the ones that would be anticipated going forward are, are significantly less. And I'm, it dawns on me that maybe some people will be remembering that it was considered a great revenue boost before, and that perhaps we should, we should uh, correct that. So I would like to add, I've, I've got some wording that I ran by Brian. I would say that the legislature has significantly limited the amount of revenue that Waitley might expect from future marijuana community impact fees from that anticipated when previous marijuana uses were approved for the zoning bylaws. I think I, I can't quite do a rapid transcription of that. You have the line. Oh, very well, so I'm, I'm, I'm quite impressed. I, that Waitley may expect, might expect from, may is fine, from future marijuana community impact fees. Okay. 
from that anticipated when previous marijuana uses were approved for the zoning bylaws. What was, what was that not, not anticipated? What's the word after that? Anticipated. Oh. Than anticipated. Then, than, then that from that in from that oh. anticipated. <laughs> okay. I'm starting to lose it. I from I, that. Just start me. I'm gonna I'm gonna just ask you to pick up from impact fees. From that. Anticipated when previous marijuana uses were approved for the zoning bylaws. Okay. 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 I'll save that as a Draft three. I don't have Did anybody anything. else have anything? Yeah. Um, Judy, uh, I'm just seeing this for the first time. If it's possible, would, would we be able to submit um, language at some point in the future? Or is this our, our sole opportunity to, to, submit, um, to submit language? For the bylaw or for information? For this, uh, for this document in particular. I think you could submit a response to the, okay. to the town. Okay. I'm not, yeah, I think that's only fair. Yeah. So our job, Jared, is to come up with a recommendation and a report that we send to the select board. That will be known after this meeting. And then you can decide how to independently engage with the select board related to that, rec that letter and recommendation. And it's the- I think to the select board and the town because our, our recommendation will be part of the I would assume the information available to voters. But your your response, I assume. I'm sure there's no problem. I, I don't know the formalities, but so are there any more discussion from the planning board? I think we're at the point where now that where we have to define what the outcome of this process we've been engaged in is. And I think that yeah. also um, would help Jared re reflect on what Jared may want to say about, about it in a broader sense. But I think it's at a point where um, we need to, to make our recommendation. Yeah, so, uh, what a, I'm sorry. Uh, or or, or, do, or is it our intention to continue debating this and rebutting it and advancing the discussion, or are we targeting what the outcome needs to be in preparation for town meeting? No, I think I just wanted to make sure that what we did in drafting this was to submit what we thought were the most important things that had been discussed before. And like I just did, I, I think it's possible that you come up with something that you think is important that we hadn't discussed. And I'm asking if anybody else has come up with any pros or cons like that. And I'm not hearing anything. So then the next step would be to vote. And so what I would propose to do is make a motion. Um, it, it may take a couple of different motions to get to a recommendation because there are three choices. So I could move. Well, that's, yeah, okay. I was going to I make was a motion. Say we needed to decide the process. Yeah. So what I was, so what I would propose to do is make a motion. I'm not doing the motion right now. I'm just describing what I'm. I'm I would do to make a motion to to recommend to the select board the uh, the adoption or approval of this bylaw. So I'd make that motion. If the motion is not seconded. 
then the motion fails. And then there could be another motion to, for example, uh, not recommend or make no recommendation. And then whichever motion um, succeeds and passes by majority vote would determine what the planning boards, what the outcome is of the planning board vote. So there could be one, two or three votes. That's then, one way to go about it. The other, the other option, I think, is to give people the option to vote yes, for, against, or no recommendation in the beginning. Yeah. That could be. But, but maybe the second is. So I think we need to discuss that. Yeah, let's do that. Because if. And then if maybe you person, could stop sharing. Uh, you're the one yeah. sharing now, right? Yeah, I'll stop sharing. Um, so give each person the chance to say, you know, yes, no, or neutral. And then we see the result of that and how many, and, it, and it, do any one of those three choices win three out of five? Is that is that how it would work, Judy? Well, it's only... I guess it's three out of four, isn't it? Oh yeah, three out of four, exactly right. Um, and that could lead to split votes. <laughs> you know, yeah. I'm not an expert in like voting first past the post. It just might be simpler to do it sort of one by one. It, it shouldn't. Yeah, be. I think I think one by one makes more sense given given the numbers. With with five people, it might not. But okay, so I'm going to go ahead and. Going to make the motion. First, we'll see if it's seconded. Then, per usual, that allows for discussion. Probably won't be much, but then we would actually, after no discussion, have a vote if we get that far. Okay. So, I move that the planning board recommend to the select board that this to the town to the town to the town that I recommend. Or just I, recommend, rec stop it recommending. Okay, that the planning board recommend to the town this bylaw revision. Did you get that, Mary? I, I'll try that one more time. That I'm, I move that the planning board recommend to the town the adoption of this bylaw revision. Is there a second? Okay. okay. Hearing none, then we know that recommend is off the table. Um, so we'll do the opposite. I'm going to make a motion that the planning board uh, recommend against or recommend against this bylaw revision to the town. Is there a second? I will second that. Okay. So now we're in the discussion <clears throat> on against. Okay. So now uh, a recommend uh, and a recommendation of against. Well, it's obvious what that would mean. And so I guess if there, unless there's more discussion, we just do a vote. Is there do we, do we want to discuss this? Then all in favor of, of recommending against. Against recommending against. <laughs> <laughs> I knew this was going to be fun. How many? That surprised me. What I counted was one vote in favor of recommending against and three votes against recommending against so that this second motion fails. Could you, could you repeat that to me, please? <laughs> I will be happy to. I couldn't I will, follow it. I will be happy to. I don't to. understand why. I, it, that totally, you, you guys totally surprised me on that one. But um, so 
we had one vote in favor of recommending against this bylaw revision. We had three votes against recommending against the bylaw revision. What that means is the second motion fails. So we have, by through two votes, we've voted against recommending it. We've also voted against recommending against it. And I think by a process of elimination, I suppose we should do the vote, but I think what that means is that we're not going to make a recommendation. We are, I think we'll we leave. So I'm going we'll to refer it to the town without a recommendation. Okay, so I move. <laughs> Oh God, this is my life. I move that the planning board refer the, this bylaw revision to the town with no recommendation. Is there a second? Okay. Who seconded? Sarah. Sarah seconded. All in favor? <laughs> Aye. Aye. <laughs> Grant? I am not going to vote in favor. Okay. All against? That would be me. Okay. So we, do we have three? So the, so the motion passes, just to be clear, that three votes for referring to the town with no recommendation and one vote against, um, one vote against recommending to the town. Okay. So, Thank but you. I think yeah. there we are. So now we add language to this this letter. Yeah. And any any changes that people want in the text. So, Jared, that's I think it's clear what the outcome is, and it's sort of you might say next in the hands of the select board, and Great. after that, Waitley voters at town meeting. Great. Great. Thank you, guys. Thank you for your deliberation. Appreciate it. I think they're meeting on the ninth. The select board. Okay. Yeah. So what does well, what does this move. mean? What does this mean for for Jared and Chris? What what what, what is what, where does this put them in the process? Did they they present this at the town meeting? Yeah, they were always going to present it at town meeting. All right. That, though that may be news to them. <laughs> were you were you aware of that that you're now you're the presenters at town meeting? Yes. Okay. okay. And that's on the twenty third. Yes. yes, that's right. So does that imply? Because now this is new information for me. Um, maybe there's so there's first a question to the planning board. Like you know, last year for planning board articles, we you know, took the podium and made some presentations. So I think one of the things I'm hearing is that regarding this proposal, the planning board will not stand up at town meeting, I mean, proactively versus we might answer questions, but we wouldn't stand up and make any public remarks to present or frame this deliberation or non-recommendation or so forth. Is that a fair statement? I think the only role we would have as a board is to comment on on our choice of no recommendation. We could all comment individually, making clear that we're speaking as individuals. But, but we won't try to. But as part well, of the discussion, not time. as part of the not as part of the presentation. Right. This so is not board, our this is not our bylaw. This is okay. the, the property owner's bylaw. Okay. So then the it is <laughs> in the hands of the proponent to coordinate with presumably the town, the town moderator, to ensure that they will be invited to make a presentation. I think we would we would explain to the moderator or somebody would. I'm, I'm, don't imagine, I don't, he hasn't faced this before. 
actually, I'm not sure who's moderating them. initially. The reason they wanted to move the, the meeting was because the moderator had a conflict, so. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So I'm assuming that this document was so brilliantly written that there's no need to wordsmith at all, but that would be unlike this, this group. I, what I might suggest, Judy, is that we get any comments to you. What I will do after we close tonight's meeting and hang up the call is I'll circulate my updated, I guess it's now draft three to everybody. And then... Um, I think we have to refer, well, okay. I would make comments now we can, they should be made in a public me meeting. Yeah, that's... And I'll say I have no further comments on the content of the document, except that it be modified to include the decision that we just made, we just came to. I would just add a sentence saying the planning board, something to the effect that the planning board has determined to make no recommendation on this bylaw to the town. Period. That works for me. Thank you for putting that together, Judy. Yeah. Really, really good. It was, an, it was a healthy exercise, actually. <laughs> it was harder than I expected. Could I just ask a quick question about the select board process? So on May 9th, the select board meets and they all receive the document and the recommendation of the planning board. Um, what happens at that meeting? Do they? I I can't answer that. I suggest you talk to Brian Domino. Um, I sent him your, we sent him your your wording. I bel believe they approved the language to go on the warrant at their last meeting, but I didn't. I didn't sit in. Um, Thanks. But. They didn't have the recommendation. I will email him tonight and tell him the recommendation. And we promised him the document as soon as possible. I think the role of the document is primarily just to go on the website for people to consult. Now, whether whether the town, whether the select board wants to, I don't know whether the select board is going to formally make a recommendation on this or not. The state law requires the planning board to. It doesn't require anybody else to. At least as I understand it. Judy, do you know whether the, well, because this is a, a petition from a resident, the, the, it must appear on the warrant, right? There, the select board can simply say, yeah. well, we're not going to even put this on the warrant. No, the select board has to, it has to go on the warrant. So we will get the, to only, the, the only thing at issue for the select board, I would think, but Brian, Brian is the authority here, um, would be whether they want to recommend it or not. Given that we didn't, I would be surprised if they did, but what board is never predictable, often not predictable. Okay. Are we I don't think we have any, is that, is that it here? Okay. Thank you guys. Thank you very much. Thanks. Um, I don't think we have any minutes. No, they're partly You've done. Had a few, next you, meeting. You have a few other things on your plate for the hospital. Right. Oh, and I guess, by the way, um, you know, I've been asked to ask you, Mary, to, to stop sending physical letters update your mailing list somehow so that you're not mailing physical letters from the town of Waitley Planning Board to the town of Waitley Planning Board or from the town of, from the planning board to the ZBA and so forth. That sending For me- some, Yeah. Yeah. You still have to mail. Now that we have the digital things, yeah. everybody's getting the stuff digitally, so they don't okay, need to notice. Okay, so 
are there, what about the ones that go to all the other boards and are we, you talked about this a little bit in the last meeting, I think. Um, should I just be sending to a butters and out, other outsiders? Yes, is my understanding yeah. in the law that you have to send- Well, there's, there's that special list for the zoning, the zoning ones that go to, to the neighboring towns and all of yep. that you have to do that that's in the law right and and then the special ones that two or it's only like three people that need to get notified for bylaw changes you know at this yeah the special ones yeah the, the three and then but all the all the abutters need physical letters so, okay well i'll just i'll just take off those but, those other labels off the tape the template yeah just the butters. That works. Okay, save us some money. Hopefully marry some time. <laughs> yeah, I noticed, Mary, that in some of these, you hand wrote the return address. <laughs> uh, yes, I. there was a problem with printing on labels okay <laughs> and for that particular mailing or yeah. actually two of them i think i i wound up doing that because it needed to get into the post office and the thing would not the label sheets wouldn't work so yeah. that's what i did okay well that doesn't normally i just want to say excellent handwriting <laughs> <laughs> much better than mine okay can we declare can we make a motion to adjourn? I'm going to move to adjourn. Second it. Thank you. All in favor? Bye. You're very patient, Mike. Yep. Thank you all. Thank you. All right. Have a great Appreciate night, all. Good night. We see you all again on May 17th for yeah, a whole week, a whole week off. Yeah, that's right. Okay, enjoy it while it lasts. Is there a, is there a meeting the last uh, Wednesday of the month also? On May 31st? Yeah. Um, I, I still don't know for sure. I would not, I would hold May 31st if you can. It is our regularly scheduled planning board meeting for a discussion about the housing committee report, which the planning board does have to vote on. Um, I just I'm trying to get clarity from FERCOG and from our housing committee if we're going to actually be ready to have that discussion. So, but I don't want you to just give those give that night away as much as that pains me to say. Well, what we're being asked about on our, they have some recommendations that had to do with zoning. We're not voting on the whole report, I don't think. Again, I'm I don't a little vague on the process. I'm, it's simply been told to me that the planning yeah. board needs to vote whether or not to accept the report. I And I intend to try to find out what we're supposed to do. I would on. clarify because yeah. my, guess is, I, my guess is that it's to vote to accept the recommendations that relate to zoning. That would make sense. Which is very I totally agree. Different, totally very agree. different thing. So um, because I don't in fact I don't think I would accept doing anything broader than that. I board. agree with you, Judy. I mean there are areas that I've I've read it, there's areas that I have no idea yeah. whether I should endorse them or not. But so yes, don't you zoning, don't shoot the messenger just yet, but I pledge to. Well, I think you could take that. I would take that back to them. We feel that this is this is as far as we're going to go. Message received. As Sorry. as a board, again, okay. I have some some thoughts on the report itself that I other parts, of, but I, I'll make them as as me. Okay, sounds good. We're off. Have a great okay. night, everyone. Have a good night. I always love spending this time together. Good night. Good night. Thanks, Mary.